Hey everybody. There were two main ideas today in chapter 10, one having to do with sampling distributions, which you've already learned about, and one having to do with something called the prediction theorem, which we're going to use to create models of sampling distributions so that we can avoid having to run simulations. So I'm going to show you each of these in the context of a binary variable. Both of the words binary and percentage in front of you are bold-faced because you're supposed to remember that anytime you have a binary variable, the thing that you're interested in about the population is a percentage. In this particular example, we're using something that we did in class, and we're asking the question, does this computer program that we've examined win more than half of its RPS games? And we're going to imagine that the sample size in this case was n equals 640 games, so that would be games played by all the students as part of our sample. Now before we begin, let's remind ourselves what a sampling distribution is. We've done this exercise before where we say a sampling distribution is a dot plot. Okay, well if it's a dot plot, then it's really trying to show us the distribution of something. So what does each dot represent? It's a dot plot where each dot represents one sample. What does it represent for each sample? It represents the percentage of games that the computer won in that particular sample. Don't be confused. When we talk about samples, we're talking about groups of 640 games that the computer has played. These dots do not represent individual games. Rather, they represent individual samples of 640 games. OK, so the main thing that we wanted to learn about is this thing that's called the prediction theorem. The prediction theorem is going to show us what a sampling distribution would look like if we could take many, many, many different random samples from the population in question. The prediction theorem tells us what the sampling distribution would look like, and it's using advanced mathematics that we don't need to worry about here. What we're interested in is what does it actually tell us. It tells us three things. The sampling distribution will always have a normal shape, and that's why we draw this model of a sampling distribution having the bell shape. Notice how it matches the dot plot that's above it. The center will be pi. Pi is the population percentage. In this case, if we're asking the question if the computer wins more than half of its RPS games, then we're going to say, well, what if it only won half? What if it was just a typical rock, paper, scissors player? Then we'd have 50% at the center. The last thing that a prediction theorem tells us is that the standard deviation can be approximated from a mathematical formula, which you see here, and we'll find it to be 0 0.020. The reason that's important is because we learned a lot about normal distributions and we learned how important the standard deviation is. So once we fill in the numbers, we can use the, the normal distribution the way we learned to in chapter 9. Before we do that, let me make a point. You need to have a label on these numbers. Each each dot in the dot plot represents the percentage of computer wins in a particular sample. And also make sure you let people know that the sample size was 640, because different sample sizes are going to lead to different sampling distributions. And now you know, this is really for the next chapter, but what you know is that you can now say things like, oh, 68% of all samples would have a percentage of computer wins somewhere between 48 and 52 percent. So we could use the empirical rule, we could use the normal table to say what kinds of samples would be rare, what kinds of samples would be typical. That's the way we're going to use this when we apply it to significance testing. That's it for now.